let's move on to the skills positions for this division. I'm assuming you're going to have the Seahawks in last place again in this area. Yeah, I did have to put the Seahawks here. And this one, you know, I really thought long and hard about this one because I do like Rashad Penny, but he's already got a hamstring thing, I think, that he's going through right now, missing practice. I'm in training camp. He's always been injured. He looked good when he got in last year. If he stays healthy, he's a very good running back. Then, But they drafted Kenneth Walk III from Michigan State, the running back, and, and I think he's going to be their bell cow. I think he's going to be very good in the NFL. He has all the tools to be a great NFL running back. Uh, uh, he was great in college. I expect him to be able to translate that to the NFL. Maybe not immediately because the offensive line in Seattle is bad. So that so that's going to hurt everything in this offense. The fact that that offensive line just seems to get worse and worse every year. They lost Dwayne Brown this offseason, did not resign back with the Seahawks. So, you know, they're, they're running backs. I like their stable of running backs, but it's nothing great, nothing proven in this league. Then you look at their wide receivers. They have Tyler Locke, DK Metcalf. Two guys that are probably top 20 in the NFL at their position. But behind them, Freddie Swain, who's that Marquis good one. When he's in the lineup, he's one of the more inconsistent guys. You know, he's a good depth guy, I guess, but nothing flashy here. But they also, in part of the Russell Wilson trade, they got Noah Fan at tight end. That's a good weapon. Will Disley, often injured, but when he's in there, he's a good weapon too. But nothing here outside of Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf maybe say, uh, you know, that this, this unit should be rated higher than anyone else in the division. So unfortunately, they are last for me. All right. And uh, who do you have a third? Third for me is going to be the 49ers, which is kind of weird to think about, weird to say out loud because they're so deep. But they they have a couple of flashy guys. Obviously, you have the George Kittles, the Debo Samuels, right? Those two are two of the better guys at their position in the NFL. When you look at running backs, this is one of those situations you have to include Trey Lance because of his running ability. And they also have Elijah Mitchell, who looked like a star as a rookie. He should be very good for them. And then the backups, Jeff Wilson Jr., Trey Sermon, pretty good. Brandon Ayuk is once again looking like a star in training camp. I'm not sure what happened last year. I remember at, at in training camp last season, Brandon Ayuk, there was a report saying Brandon Ayuk got into Kyle Shanahan's doghouse. I don't know if it was a fumbling issue or a drop issue or what, but he's been balling out in training camp, expected to have a big role in this offense. But we have to see it happen before I'll believe that he can stay consistent through an NFL season. So while they do have nice pieces here, this division is stacked with talent. So for me, the 49ers had to be in third. All right. Well, who do you have a second? The second here is actually going to be the Super Bowl champions, oh. even though they have Cooper Cup. You know, I, I had to put them here because they're not deep. And, and that kind of stuff matters to me when we're talking about the skill position guys. You have Cam Akers and Daryl Henderson, both guys who could start on any NFL roster. Um, you have Cooper Cup, who, again, triple crown winner at the moment. We have to call him the best receiver in the league because he proved it the last time we saw him. And they added Allen Robinson. They have Van Jefferson, who, with the injuries that happened last season, proved that he can be a guy that could step up and be a guy. He's been here for you know three, four years at this point. He knows the system. He's good in it. I mean, it can be a deep threat for them. So I like what they have. Tutu Atwell is another name that the casual fan probably won't know. But if you play fantasy football, you've probably heard the name. You know that if he has to get in there, uh, if one of these guys gets injured, then, then he can produce as a third receiver would need to produce in a three wide receiver offense. But then they also have Tyler Higby, who's a very good receiving tight end, especially teaming up with Matthew Stafford. Looked really good last year. As long as he can stay healthy and on the field, he'll be a good weapon for them. So they have a lot of good guys on the team as long as they're healthy, a very potent offense, but again, not as deep. So they had to be second for me in this division. Okay. Well, and obviously that puts, uh, in your opinion, the Cardinals skill set their skill positions at number one in the division huh yes the cardinals because they do have top end talent and depth on their squad and when you look at the running backs we're going to start with james connor guy who had a bunch of touchdowns last year he shares his backfield i wouldn't expect him to have 18 touchdowns again that was, that was kind of an anomaly if that happens again and then we really need to start looking at 
Kingsbury and how he deploys guys in his offense to get the best out of it. Because what James Conner did last year was kind of crazy with the amount of touches that he had, but he's a good running back. And he was finally able to stay healthy for pretty much the entire season. Then they went out and they signed Daryl Williams, who's been with the Chiefs for a little while in a backup role. When he has to come into the game, he looks good. So that's, that's a very good backup to have. And there's a lot of hype on the rookie running back, Eno Benjamin. People saying that he could actually be be the number two in this offense, even by the end of the year, maybe being the starter in this offense. I personally haven't done any film research into him. I haven't looked into him enough, but the things that I'm hearing from, from multiple different sources is that Eno Benjamin is a name that you should look for when you're talking about the Cardinals, especially if you play fantasy football, a guy that you're probably going to hear more and more about as the year goes on. And that's just the running backs. You go look at the wide receivers. Obviously they have D hop. Now D hop's out for the first six games, but that leaves 11 games for them to have D hop. He's still a top five receiver in my opinion. And then they have Hollywood Brown. They have AJ Green, who, eh, who knows how much he's going to play with all the young guys on this team because they have Rondell Moore, Greg Dortch, who isn't a name a whole lot of people will know coming into this season. But if there are some injuries on this team, which probably will be because it's the NFL it happens. Greg Dorch is a name that people will probably hear at some point. He'll make some plays. And Andy, Andy Isabella has made some plays for the Cardinals when they've had some injury issues over the last couple of seasons. So they have so much depth at wide receiver. I'd be comfortable with any of those guys on the field for me in a three wide receiver set. Any of the running backs, you could deploy two running back sets with these guys. I mean, and then you go to tight ends. They have Zach Ertz, who they were able to resign for, I believe, a three-year contract in the offseason. And then they drafted a tight end, Trey McBride, to come behind him. I've heard he's an athletic tight end. Again, haven't looked into him because I don't expect him to do much in this offense behind Zach Ertz right away. But a name that if something happens to Zach Ertz, he could have a big role in this offense. So they have the depth. They have the the high-end talent here. The Cardinals are one of the best offensive units in the league, and it starts with this skill position unit. All right, so the Rams in your opinion, have the best quarterback in the division. That's right. And the Cardinals have the number one slot of the skill position. So I'm seeing a pattern developing here in this division. 